Hi, my name's Rachel Andrews. Welcome to Everyday Athlete. On this week's video, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Professor Gary Connett. Thank you so much for coming along. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, that, that, my, my absolute pleasure. So, um, Gary reached out to me um, via one of my channels um, to have a chat about asthma and outdoor swimming, which is something I'm really interested in, in that I have asthma mildly myself, but um, so many people do have it that I thought that that's tempted me in immediately. What a great hook. So. Gary, give me the context. What are we doing here? So um, this came out about through one of my colleagues. I, I, I'm a paediatrician. I, I work in Southampton uh, and I run a difficult asthma service there. Uh, and one of my colleagues, uh, Will Verlin, who works in Dorchester, he runs an open water swimming charity off Avon Beach. And he was approached by a local lady who had been doing open water swimming. She'd had asthma since uh, her early childhood, through since her teenage years. And she found that after starting open water swimming, uh, the year later, over the winter, when she was typically worse, she didn't have so bad asthma. The following year, uh, which is where we are now, um, typically she gets bad asthma during the winter months, uh, cold water, temperature changes, that kind of thing were making her worse, all went away. Her asthma was uh, uh, effectively, dare I say it, cured at the moment without the need for medication. So she thought this was quite impressive. Uh, she reached out to Will, knowing about his charity, uh, and Will, knowing my interest in asthma, let me know. Uh, and she made me aware of your of your website uh, and, and your work, and so uh, I reached out to you. Well, I mean, and I'm so glad you did. This sounds so interesting, because we hear so much about how outdoor swimming is great for mental health, uh, for Indeed. physical health, for, sure. for exercise. Yeah. But not so much about, we, uh, we hear people anecdotally saying that uh, some of their chronic aches and pains are, are being alleviated Indeed. by the cold yeah. water. What is it you think? I mean, this is fascinating. Uh, uh, what do, mm, what well, do you think is going yeah, on? Well, I, I have a theory. Um, some people might think it's a bit of a wacky theory, but um, uh, it comes down to thinking about what asthma actually is. And there's something that we have uh, that's called the diving reflex and I think asthma might be something to do with the diving reflex. In our airways we have smooth muscle, we have muscle around the tubes that we breathe through and asthma essentially is a disease where those muscles contract inappropriately, make our airways narrow and that makes it hard to breathe. Uh, people wheeze, they have whistling sounds trying to breathe through those narrow tubes. So what's all that about? Why do, why do we have that? Well. I wonder whether that smooth muscle is there as a remnant of our evolutionary past when we were in the sea. If you look at mammals who uh, are aquatic, think uh, mammals like dolphins for example, they have a very strong diving reflex. We know that in humans the diving reflex includes a slowing of the heartbeat and a move of the circulation towards the vital organs, things like our brain and our hearts, and this is essentially a survival reflex for immersion in water. In the mammals in the sea, they also contract the smooth muscles in their airways, and paradoxically perhaps, when they deep dive, they empty their lungs of air. And they do this to prevent nitrogen narcosis, the absorption of nitrogen into their blood, and which is essentially the bends, what you might know as the bends. So that reflex is there in all mammals, and I wonder whether asthma is a big part of an exaggeration of that reflex. So that's my kind of thinking about this. And so that then ties into the open water swimming practice, and whether there's a difference amongst those people in the extent to which that reflex might be occurring. Uh, and you've talked about in your videos I've seen the uh, the cold sh is it the cold shock cold shock yeah the cold shock which occurs when people uh, first immerse in open water when it's cold, and the characteristic feature of that is this involuntary gasping. I think you describe that in your video <laughs> very much yes, so. Yes, indeed. I'm sure anybody watching would uh, <laughs> would identify with that. Sure, but one of the interesting things about that is is that over time with repeat open water swimming, I understand that reflex becomes less. 
it may not go away entirely, mm. but it does certainly become suppressed. So that reflex being suppressed makes me wonder, well, could it be that the diving reflex is also being suppressed in the same way in people? And maybe that might be the explanation for this lady's asthma getting better. I don't know. Wow. There's no research out there that I can see, and this is a, an entirely new area to think about for asthma. But I'm really curious to know more about this and perhaps other people's experience of their asthma and open water swimming. I mean, that would be fascinating, wouldn't it? So what, so what could we do as a community? Would it be helpful if people were, if they um, have asthma and they felt that it's um, alleviated or improved in some way to, to comment underneath this video? That would be quite helpful. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Really. Yes, I mean, there's obvious health benefits we know about from open water swimming, not least the improvement in mental health in people, uh, physical fitness, which may also make mm. asthma better. We know that um, uh, emotional disturbances can make asthma worse and if people are, have better mental health their illness may be improved. So there's lots of other reasons why mm. asthma might get better. We know that swimming in swimming pools and chlorine exposure can actually cause asthma. So there's a paradox there mm. with, with exercise um, uh, with swimming in other environments. But what about the open water experience? I, I just don't know the answer to that. I'm very curious mm. to hear about it. Does asthma get worse, get better, stay the same? What's the feedback from individuals with asthma who are enjoying this, this pursuit? Well, I mean, that would be really interesting to, to start to get that information together, wouldn't it? So I, I guess something we're asking would be if you have asthma and you have felt any difference whatsoever from, from regular outdoor swimming, could you drop us a comment underneath and let us know how it's affected you? And, um, and then we'll, we'll kind of figure out where to move from there, really. Yeah, okay. Just one thing you mentioned there um, about asthma and mental health. I hadn't come across that link before. Sure. Could you just yeah. tell us a little well, bit Well, I, I just think that, um, you know, our minds and our bodies are very much one and the same thing. And so much of what I see in my difficult asthma service when I'm managing the most the more severe young people in, in, our, uh, in our region, uh, addressing those mental health concerns and recognising that the mind drives asthma, drives bronchoconstriction, constriction, the tightening of the airways through what we call the, the vagus nerve, our autonomic nervous system. This is a big part of what makes children wheezy. And if we can identify that, if we can take measures to alleviate those stresses which can be difficult can be challenging then asthma can be improved so so that's an important link that yeah. i think um is sometimes under recognized and not addressed in the way that it needs to be to help people that is fascinating that's that there's so much mm. here to dive mm. into i think we'll be asking <laughs> you to come back again Excuse the pun. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah brilliant thank you so much for your time yeah, pleasure this pleasure to talk to you Thank you, Rachel. Uh, let's let's hope we can we can throw up some some information for you and and maybe move this uh, this exciting area forwards because it will be good to yeah. well, I imagine for you for you as well to be able yeah. to dive a yeah. bit further into. Indeed, I'm curious to know curious to know people's experience. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Thank you ever so much. Wow, we that was really interesting, wasn't it? I hope you found that as good as I did. It was brilliant to have Gary along talking to us about his theories on asthma, and. Uh, I'd love it if you could drop a comment into the space below to let me know how you've got on with your asthma and whether you think it's made any difference whatsoever getting into cold water. And I will pass on those comments to Gary and we'll see if we can influence a little bit of research in the area maybe. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video and if you have, you'll give it a like and drop us that comment. And also, please don't forget to subscribe because I'd love to have you along and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it is nice. And... Those clouds down there, though. <sighs> it looks like something coming in from Mordor. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, it's proper achy cold. Oh, it is on your fingers, isn't it? Yeah. I better take it on on my right hand. Oh, it's taking my breath away. It's in my hand. <laughs>